Auto binding is awesome in Bubble because you can just update a value right there on the screen, have it saved to the database without having to run a workflow, and your users can see it on the screen there, updated in real time. So let's take a look at how this works over in this dashboard. What, we, what we're gonna use for our example today is a marketing dashboard that maybe you know a client could come in and they could update some things related to you know some type of product that they're gonna offer out on the social medias and we're gonna you know run some fancy numbers and basically uh, uh, you know learn what we get as those are advertised but the, the long and short of this video is you're going to learn how to take fields like this where someone could go and edit it and auto bind that data from the field here to the data in the database. So let's see how that's done over in our bubble backend dashboard. We're going to work on both of these here. One of these I've kind of got up as a very easy example. So you see that when you are dealing with an input, um, you've got your content format. Uh, no, this one's going to be currency because that's the value price. We're just gonna hit auto bind on these ones here, and this is kind of the first step, something you do. Uh, now this one, these ones happen to all be set up. So here I am in, let's go and check here on this reveal element. So I'm in row four, and row four is the group that holds this input. So you wanna pay attention to that because when you have an element that's auto binding, it's gonna use the parent group's uh, data type uh, and, and then a field within that type. And so our data type here in row four is this thing called an offer. And uh, the parent group's offer has, you know, a number of uh, things in it, ad spend, budget, whatever, so, so on and so forth. But we're, we want our cost of goods sold for this particular field. So you can see that that's kind of how that is set up. And then now I'm gonna, I'm gonna show it off uh, kind of more from scratch or whatever. We'll do it for this one as well. Uh, for this next row. But before we do that, let's go ahead and just take a look here. So I'll point out here, we're working on this P2, and I don't have an offer selected here, so none of that data is uh, is set up. And then actually, you know, perhaps I, perhaps I want to remove the placeholder here or have it be a placeholder of, uh, you know, this P2 name, but we'll get to that. What I wanna show off for a moment here is this P2 name is the oil free oil change. Uh, our value is $120 for value for this person, and it's free, uh, price of zero. Cost of goods sold for labor and oil is gonna be $40. And so let's see what we get when we select this introductory car offer. So we can see that this um, name, value, price, and cost of goods gets filled in and looks like we could uh, update that field type to be currency. Um, so now let's see this one more time in action, and this one's gonna be a little bit more from scratch because you're gonna see me update the uh, the groups and kind of get those prepared because you'll wanna do that on your end as well. So that uh, the bonus of this video, I suppose, is you get to see this in action twice, so you can just be double sure that as you go and do your thing that um, you will, uh, you know, you know exactly what to do because you it, it's locked in. Uh, one thing I'm going to do here, so let's see, what is this, P, yep, so I'm actually going to update this as well. And product number two, cost of goods sold. Okay, so um, with that set up, uh, let's see, formatted as, is it currency? Yes, this currency. Okay, and then so we can see that a gross profit, there's a calculation made on it where uh, the price and the cost of goods sold, so if it's free, it's zero, it's gonna be, so it's gonna be negative, it's like a loss leader for this one, but then now let's go and see some math set up for this one. I guess the math is not that important, it's more uh, how do you do the auto binding thing, right? That's what we're here for. So uh, let's see, this is row number six. So the row that the input in, to kind of summarize and, and go back and basically we're seeing this a second time over so that we can really lock in what it is to, to auto bind things. And so we're gonna find this parent groups offer. However, you could be dealing with a group where you just need to do a search for and then you need to find the specific type of thing that you're working with and then maybe you need to go out and search for that and find it by some conditional and so on and so forth. In this particular situation, it's just grabbing what's on the parent group and the parent group is grabbing from that and so on and it's grabbing from a from a drop down um, from this one actually so um, 
and we'll see that here shortly. Uh, but so, okay, so that we're going to set this up for all of these things here. And then that will conclude our tutorial. We'll see it. We'll have seen this in action a whole bunch of times so you can see what it is that is leading to this data being saved in the database without having to um, run a workflow. So now we're going to hit auto bind, auto bind on all of these. And then we are going to, let's see, this is P name and this is P4. And then we'll update that here as well. And then there's one other step that we'll get to right as we end this. There are some privacy rules that you'll want to set up and make sure that you have in place uh, because the way the database works is it needs these privacy rules on it so that way things can be saved so that uh, Bubble knows that this person has access to be able to do this thing without uh, running workflow. So here we are on price, I believe. Yep, so we've got name, value, price, and for this particular field, and again, yours will be what they are, but the whole, the whole setup here is just to turn on this auto bind, select which field to modify, make sure that the parent groups um, row or parent groups group has the data type that you're trying to modify. And then the last step is to navigate over to data. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to click this button to find a new rule. And what, what we have here is we're saying for this particular app, it's going to be different for yours, but think about the users. So like we have clients on this app, we have admins and things like that. Um, so if the user is not a client, that means they're an admin. So like, yeah, they can do it. They can, you know, what, what you want to do is you want to come in here. And so I guess I'll, uh, I'll actually show this. So, so if the current user is a client, they have a list of brands, at least that's the way, or sorry, a list of offers. That's the way that it works in this particular app. So, if this list of offers contains this one, because we're working on uh, offers, or if the current user's type is not client, that means they're an admin. At least this is, remember, this is, I'm doing this specific to my world, and you'd be doing it specific to your world, so think about those conditions. And then we're gonna allow auto binding, and then we're gonna auto bind Obviously, I've already got these selected and set up for this. So just auto bind the fields that you want to auto bind, leave the other ones off. And then, you know, everyone else, they cannot auto bind. So if that would mean if they are a client, uh, but they don't have this offer in their list of offers, it means like they're, they're a client for somebody else or some something else. And they have different offers, not this one. Uh, and so that would mean, you know, basically only people can modify their own stuff is how that translates. So you'll want to make sure that you set this up because you'll note that when you do set this up over in Bubble uh, or up over in your Bubble uh, Canvas area, when you enable auto binding on something, you will um, you'll get a message that says, let's see if we can find this here. You want to modify type of thing, blah, 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 but there are no privacy rules that let you do this. Click here to go to the privacy section of the tab. So this is this because I haven't set this one up for this uh, data types or anything like that. This uh, same message would have shown here, but I already had these set up starting this video. So I'm just showing off um, kind of the full loop of all the steps there. So if you're looking to auto bind data in Bubble from a field, that's how you do it. Uh, Again, a full summary is select auto bind, select what field you want to auto bind. Um, it's going to auto bind to the parents thing. So whatever parent group, make sure that that uh, parent group has the type uh, of data that you're trying to modify for the field that you're modifying. And then last but not least, go over, set up a rule and you could just say if the current user is logged in or whatever for testing, right? So just that, you know, it will work for anyone for the time being and then worry about your privacy rules later. But then you have to select those particular fields that you want to auto bind. And then, so let's actually finally finish this with a last check here. You know, I did, didn't hit the calculation on this one here. We'll call it good though. And we can see that, um, 
maybe if this was not free and this was a hundred dollar 120 but for a limited time eighty dollar oil change that this upstates the 40 so we're making forty dollars there instead but if it's just a free you know lost leader come into this place just to get people into here um, we can see that 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 works for the fields that we just set up so um, thanks for watching if you liked this video like it or subscribe to the channel for more tips about bubble